Welcome to the Daily Devotional with Derek Nider. Thanks for joining us as he walks us through the pages of Scripture with a daily word of insight and encouragement. Hey, it's really good to be with you today for our daily devotion. We're in Nehemiah. We'll be in chapter 2 today. So if you have your Bibles, you can turn to Nehemiah chapter 2. We're going we're gonna to start in verse 18 again. I'm going to pray for us and we'll read the Word of God together. Let's pray. Father, thank you so much for this time. And I do pray that for whatever local body of believers we may be a part of, uh, God, we pray for our churches, that we would be on mission, that we would be filled with purpose, and that, God, we would be unified for your glory. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, if you've been hanging with us for a while on Daily Devotions, you know I've never done this before, but I felt like it was necessary uh, to do this today. We're going to check out a verse that we already talked about uh, in our last devotion. And there's just one more thing I want to say about this verse. The Bible says in verse 18 of chapter 2, And I told them of the hand of my God, which had been good upon me, and also of the king's words that he had spoken to me. So they said, let us rise up and build. Then they set their hands to do this good work. So, you know, we talked about Nehemiah and uh, how he had surveyed the situation for himself and then went and uh, kind of rallied the people together. Uh, And, you know, I was just considering this final verse or this part of this verse again where the scripture says, so they said, let us rise up and build. Then they set their hands to do this good work. You know, just kind of really thinking about what happens when the people of God Um, are on mission together. You know, we can see from this um, Old Testament example, and by the way, you know, we're going to be talking about spiritual warfare and how we deal with spiritual warfare coming up soon because it wasn't, was not an easy route for them. But what we can see from this Old Testament example that um, when people are on mission together, when the people of God have their uh, target set and they're on the mission that God has given, what happens is, They find purpose, you know, they find collectively the purpose that God has for them, which is so important for God's people to have the right purpose. And in finding purpose, they also find unity. Uh, We see, and we're going to see throughout this book, that these people are united together, um, not just in the good times, but in the difficult times as well. And there was a, a common bond. There was a unifying thing that kept them together, that bound them together in, in, in their circumstance uh, where they were really literally willing to lay down their lives for one another. Um, but there was just this extraordinary unity. And I think what's true for this Old Testament example is true for the church today, right? I mean, the church needs to be on mission, on God's mission. And I think if you went to 10 churches, you know, you might find 10 different missions. And I'm not going to say today that all of those particular things are necessarily wrong uh, because there are different things that God has us on mission for. Uh, But one thing for sure that we should all share, that we should all have in common as the people of God is we are on mission to reach the world with the gospel, right? The, The mission for us is the great commission. It's what Jesus says, said to his disciples to go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Like that, there are a lot of things we're supposed to be doing together as a people of God. That for sure is uh, undeniable. That is a non-negotiable. That should be setting at center of our purpose. Um, That should be, remember there are priorities that we have as the people of God. That should be set as priority. And you know, when we get that right, everything else falls into its place. But one thing it does do for us is it gives us divine purpose, right? It gives us collectively as the people of God divine purpose. Why are we here? Uh, What does God want us to be doing? For this Old Testament example, the purpose of God for them was building a wall. They were to build a wall so that Jerusalem could flourish again. And the flourishing of Jerusalem meant spiritual connection with the Father. And for us, the son has died on the cross. He's been raised from the dead. And now what we're supposed to do is we are supposed to share that message with the world. We are to be a kingdom influence, not building an earthly kingdom or geographic kingdom or a political kingdom, but bringing the kingdom of God into the hearts and minds of men and women who have yet to believe. 
And when we set that as our mission, God-given mission, we have purpose, right? We can say together, hey, listen team, church, this is what we're after, this is what we're doing. And in that, we'll have unity. Like we are bound together because we are to together collectively as a community walking in the mission and the purpose that God has for his people. And that binds us together. Listen, it is like a glue. You know, when the church is not on mission, the, the consequence is a local church is fragmented and scattered. You know, when the church is on the wrong mission, the consequence is it creates turmoil among the people of God. And then not only that, but it misrepresents God. And so listen, today in our own lives and in our church, let's be on mission. That means the Great Commission. Let's fulfill our purpose. And in that, let's be unified together. God bless you. Have a great day. We hope this podcast has ministered to you. If it has, we welcome you to rate it or leave a review. If you would like to stay connected with Pastor Derek Nider or find many more teachings, please visit awakenlv.org. Click visit and then choose Pastor Derek Nider. These links are also in this episode's description. Until next time, God bless you.